Today on the Johnny Kaberg Show, where did we come from? How did we get here? What brought us into existence? In most high schools and colleges, Charles Darwin's theory of evolution is presented as an established fact of science rather than a theory. But today, many leading scientists in their peer review literature are rejecting Darwin's theory for many reasons. One of the most important being the Cambrian explosion of animals, where complex, fully formed animals suddenly just appeared in the fossil record with no prior ancestors before them. Why do some scientists believe that these animals present compelling evidence of an all-powerful designing intelligence in the history of life? My guest today is Dr. Stephen Meyer, who received his PhD in the philosophy of science from Cambridge University as the author of the best-selling book, Darwin's Doubt. We invite you to join us. Welcome to our program. I'm John Ankerberg. Thanks for joining me. Our topic is, why are many scientists today rejecting the standard textbook theory of evolution, known as neo-Darwinism, that we all learn in high school and college textbooks? And where did the problems with contemporary evolutionary theory begin? Well, in the next several weeks, we're going to take a fresh look at the theory of evolution and the scientific problems confronting it with scientist and philosopher Dr. Stephen Meyer. Dr. Meyer is a former geophysicist who received his PhD in the philosophy of science from Cambridge University. He's written two best-selling books, Signature in the Cell and Darwin's Doubt. In Darwin's Doubt, Dr. Meyer tells how Darwin himself doubted the ability of his own theory to explain a crucial piece of evidence and how that doubt has grown up to create a major crisis in evolutionary thinking today. Darwin was troubled by a major event in the history of life known as the Cambrian Explosion, in which the first major groups of animals appeared abruptly in the fossil record. Dr. Meyer, we're glad that you're here. And today I want to begin with a clip from Illustra Media's beautiful documentary movie, Darwin's Dilemma, which asks, how could the complex animals in the Cambrian Explosion suddenly come into existence? I want you to watch. An ancient mystery is etched upon these mountains. A story of primordial oceans and prehistoric life, of creatures stranger than fiction, and the controversy that has surrounded them for more than a century. Buried among these majestic peaks are glimpses of an event that transformed the planet in a moment of geological time. Compelling evidence etched in stone that challenges long-held assumptions about the origin of animal life on Earth. Today, most paleontologists think that complex animals first appeared on Earth about 530 million years ago during a geological period known as the Cambrian. But early in the 19th century, 
little was understood about this seminal event in the history of life. In 1831, the renowned geologist Adam Sedgwick began to excavate the Cambrian rock strata in northern Wales. He was assisted by Charles Darwin, a recent graduate of Cambridge University. For the young Darwin, the fossils embedded in the Cambrian shale were an intriguing curiosity. But at 22, he lacked the perspective to appreciate their full significance. Natural selection, the theory of evolution, and the origin of species all lay years ahead. So he couldn't imagine that the stones beneath him held a mystery he would never resolve. It was a mystery Darwin would ponder into old age and then pass on to future generations. The mystery of the Cambrian explosion. Now, Dr. Meyer, you've written a best-selling book called Darwin's Doubt. What was the doubt that Charles Darwin had, and what is the Cambrian explosion? Why is it so important? Well, Darwin had a doubt about an event in the history of life known as the Cambrian explosion. And the Cambrian explosion is the geologically uh, sudden or abrupt appearance of most of the major groups of animals that have ever existed on Earth. And this is a dramatic event in the history of life because it documents the appearance of the first major complex animal forms and the fact that these animal forms appear so suddenly in the fossil record, which was something that was really contrary to Darwin's thinking about the history of life, which was something that he was acutely aware of and which bothered him, uh, as the film said, right into the end of his life. Yeah. Well, we're going to introduce this topic as we go along, and I want to go to this next clip, and we're going to show how the fossils in the Cambrian explosion came to be found. I mean, this is fascinating for folks. Watch. More than a century ago, a stunning window to the Cambrian explosion was opened by a series of discoveries made in Western Canada. In 1886, the Canadian Pacific Railroad reached British Columbia and the Kicking Horse Valley. For the first time, Eastern and Western Canada were linked by a 2,500-mile steel artery that opened the Rocky Mountains to tourists, adventurers, and men of science. Among them was the geologist R.G. McConnell. Earlier in the year, McConnell had heard reports of a shale bed on the flank of Mount Stephen, just outside the town of Field. Railroad carpenters who had explored the area said it was filled with stone bugs. In September, McConnell climbed the mountain. To his amazement, he found unmistakable imprints of prehistoric life on most of the shales in the bed. McConnell was standing in an ocean of fossilized trilobites. Trilobites are icons to the Cambrian, and there are billions of trilobites high up on the shoulder of Mount Stephen. And one reason for that is that as they grew, they periodically threw off their old skeleton and made a new skeleton. So basically, they made many fossils through their individual lives. McConnell collected hundreds of these fossils and sent many of them to other scientists for examination. News of his work soon reached the offices of the United States Geological Survey and Charles Doolittle Walcott, a leading expert on Cambrian paleontology. On August 30th, 1909, Walcott led his team below this ridge, 15 miles north of Mount Stephen. There, legend holds, he stopped to examine a pile of shale that blocked the narrow horse trail. As he picked up a slab, the geologist noticed a faint but well-defined fossil he had never seen before, a delicate lace crab he later named Morella. He knew plenty and plenty about the Cambrian. He was an expert on the Cambrian. He published many papers. And when you see this little Morella, it's only about a centimeter in length. You get out your hand lens, and you suddenly see that this is, you know, shouldn't be there. This is soft-bodied, effectively. And I'm sure he realized in seconds what it meant. He must have. 
All right, Dr. Meyer, why were these Burgess fossils so important? Well, the, the fossils of the Burgess Shale documented that the Cambrian explosion was even more explosive than Darwin had realized. Now, Darwin was really troubled by the Cambrian explosion and the, just from the fossils that he knew, trilobites and uh, a range of other forms. But he anticipated that future fossil finds would fill in the missing ancestors in the lower Precambrian rocks so that the history of life would look like a great branching tree, as I have on the slide here. Um, but unfortunately, uh, what was discovered from the, the standpoint of a Darwinian theory was that you had this sudden appearance of all the first complex forms of animal life, but the ancestral forms, the sl slightly simpler forms in the lower Precambrian strata uh, did, were, were not present. And the Burgess Shale, rather than documenting those ancestral forms, actually documented a range of new complex animals that even Darwin didn't know about. And so, in effect, the, the discoveries of the, the Burgess Shale showed that the Cambrian explosion had been even more explosive than Darwin anticipated, and so the mystery of those missing fossils was even more acute. And the discoveries in the fossil record were just beginning. And as the paleontologists continue to dig, as we're going to see in this next clip, what they found next was astonishing. I want you to watch. In the summer of 1910, Walcott found a fossiliferous band in the ridge. After blasting a quarry, the geologist and his family unearthed thousands of exquisitely preserved specimens from soft-bodied animals previously unknown to science. He called the site the Burgess Shale. There in Burgess Shale, especially the lower level which Walcott first exploited, the preservation is miraculous, it's astonishing. We find trilobites, of course, but we find many, many other sorts of arthropods, almost none of which are ever found in a typical Cambrian assemblage. So we can treat them effectively as being soft-bodied. They have almost no chance of being fossilized in normal circumstances. Geologists believe that the animals of the Burgess Shale were buried quickly and alive by an avalanche of sediment that created an airtight tomb and prevented the decay of soft body parts like eyes, legs, and internal organs. Now in the animal Morella, very often there's a sort of what we call a dark stain. And I find this very intriguing because that dark stain evidently is the body contents are oozing out. So in other words, the animal is beginning to decay and then something stops it. The Burgess Shale was once part of a massive reef in the Pacific Ocean, a haven for a menagerie of life that thrived at the edge of what is now the North American continent. Throughout long periods of geologic upheaval, tectonic forces elevated these rocks and the fossils they bear more than 7,000 feet above sea level. Here are the basic body plans of major animal groups that still exist today, and many others now extinct, made their first appearance in the fossil record so suddenly that biologist Richard Dawkins noted, it is as though they were just planted there without any evolutionary history. All right, Stephen, let's tell the folks why we're showing them all this information. Why were the Burgess Shale fossils such a surprise? Well, they were a major challenge to Darwin's uh, theory, and they challenged Darwin's theory in two different ways. First, they challenged his picture of the history of life. As I mentioned before, Darwin had depicted the history of life as a great branching tree where the, the, where the animal forms at the top of the tree represented all the forms the, of life that exist today. In the very base of the tree, there was uh, represented by a single one-celled organism, and then all the branches, connecting branches, represented how that single first organism gradually morphed and changed and became many different things over, uh, over long periods of geological time. And um, so the, the, the first animal forms, according to Darwin, is a, Darwin, should have arisen very gradually through a series of small incremental variations and steps. But instead they appear very abruptly. So rather than a tree-like picture of the history of life, the Cambrian fossil record documents something much more, more like an uh, a lawn or an orchard of separate trees that never quite connect at the base. 
And so you have this, this sudden appearance and challenges the picture of the history of life. It also challenges Darwin's idea of the mechanism by which uh, living forms would have arisen. His, his idea was that natural selection, the mechanism of natural selection, would have acted on small incremental variations that would have accumulated over many, many, many generations. And therefore, that life would have arisen very, very gradually over time. The first complex animals would have arisen very gradually. But instead, what we see in the fossil record is this abrupt appearance of complexity of complex animal forms. And this is also very contrary to Darwin's thinking about how the mechanism of how these organisms would have arisen. Yeah, and part of the evidence that we're going to see next is how complex the animals that were found in the Burgess Shale, how actually complex they were. I want you folks to watch. These fossils gave science its first detailed look at the biology of the Cambrian seas. With computer animation, we can now bring that world to life. Like something out of science fiction, Opabinia was a creature so bizarre it still eludes classification. While its five eyes watch for predators, the animal captured its prey with a grasping claw. First described in 1899 from a fossil found on Mount Stephen, Guiwaxia has also puzzled scientists. This mysterious Cambrian animal was covered with overlapping scales and may have fed by scraping microscopic particles off the seafloor. The animal most frequently discovered at Walcott's quarry was Morella. More than 15,000 fossil specimens of this prehistoric crab have been excavated, most revealing multiple pairs of jointed legs and feather-like gill branches used for swimming. The anatomy of Hallucigenia has baffled paleontologists since Walcott first discovered its fossilized remains. Two rows of sharp spines on its back and more than a dozen needle-thin legs gave the animal the appearance of being upside down, even when it was right side up. At the top of the food chain was Anomalocaris, the undisputed terror of the Cambrian seas. Measuring up to three feet long, this super predator used barbed feeding arms to capture both hard and soft-bodied animals. It then devoured its prey with layers of razor-sharp teeth. Between 1910 and 1924, Charles Walcott collected more than 60,000 Cambrian fossils many of which are still studied in museums and research centers around the world. But the treasures of the Burgess Shale represent more than a wealth of information about ancient life. They are also flashpoints in a controversy that began long before the great geologist ever set foot in the Canadian Rockies. folks, this stuff is astonishing. Before I ask Dr. Meyer to explain why nothing distressed Darwin more than the Cambrian explosion, I first want you to hear what Charles Darwin himself said. Watch. In 1859, this country estate, 30 miles south of London, was ground zero for a scientific revolution. Here in the solitude of his study, Charles Darwin completed his landmark book, on the origin of species. In it, 
Darwin attempted to explain how every organism that had ever lived evolved from a single common ancestor as a result of natural selection acting on random variations. Common descent and natural selection became the twin pillars of modern biology and Darwin's branching tree of life, its foremost icon. Yet despite the clarity and detail of his argument, Darwin acknowledged a problem that defied explanation, the Cambrian fossil record. The distinctness of specific forms and their not being blended together by innumerable transitional links is a very obvious difficulty. I allude to the manner in which species belonging to several of the main divisions of the animal kingdom suddenly appear in the lowest known fossiliferous rocks. When Darwin was writing The Origin of Species, it was well known at the time that the first fossils of animals appeared suddenly without precursors in the geological record. So there was a deep conflict between what his theory told him to expect to find, namely an abundance of transitional forms going back to that common ancestor for the animals, versus what was there in the fossil record. Darwin knew that if his theory was true, the older rock strata directly beneath the Cambrian layer should reveal a progression of fossils connecting simple earlier forms to complex animals like trilobites through a trail of incremental steps and failed biological experiments. Such evidence would document the trial and error process of natural selection. But Darwin says in the origin, where are these transitional forms? They're not there in the fossil record. What we see instead are fully formed, discrete groups. Now that's a world-class puzzle for someone like Darwin. If my theory be true, it is indisputable that before the lowest Cambrian stratum was deposited, long periods elapsed. And during these periods of time, the world swarmed with living creatures. To the question of why we do not find rich fossiliferous deposits belonging to these assumed earlier periods prior to the Cambrian, I can give no satisfactory answer. Dr. Meyer, why were these fossils in the Burgess Shale so challenging to Darwin's theory of evolution? Well, the fossils of the Burgess Shale, as well as all the other Cambrian uh, fossil beds that have been discovered, raised two mysteries. Uh, create two mysteries for, for Darwin's uh, theory, and they were the source of his doubt about the ability of his theory to explain the, the whole of the evidence. And the first mystery I call the mystery of the missing fossils, and the, the film clip there documents it very well, that you have the first major complex animal forms arising in the Cambrian, and as you look in the lower pre-Cambrian strata, you don't find the the ancestral precursors to those fossils that you would expect to find if Darwin's picture of the history of life is true. And the second mystery is closely related to it, and I call this the mystery of how you build an animal. Uh, how would the evolutionary process build an animal? According to Darwin, the process by which complex animal life arose was the process of natural selection acting on small incremental variations. And Darwin uh, understood that the, the variations would need to be small and incremental because if there was a large change in, uh, in the form of an animal from one generation to the next, that would be something like a birth defect or a deformity, and he understood that those kind of uh, gross changes would always be deleterious or detrimental. So instead, the changes that would occur from generation to generation that would be the source of the evolutionary change over time had to be very small and incremental, which meant that the process needed to take a great deal of time. And instead, what we see in the fossil record is this abrupt appearance without the ancestors and without any evidence of that slow, gradual trial and error process having occurred over time. So the Cambrian explosion raises two mysteries, the mystery of the missing fossils and the mystery of, uh, of what is the process by which all this complexity uh, came about. All right, folks, now next week, we're gonna see the paleontologists continue to discover new fossils. And as they did, they began to realize that the Cambrian explosion was an even bigger problem than Darwin had ever imagined. And we're going to find out why next week, so I hope that you'll join us. Stay tuned for scenes from next week's program. If you would like to have all of the information in our new series, The Mystery of the Missing Fossils, featuring Dr. Stephen Meyer, 
All four half-hour television programs are available on DVD for a gift of $49. You will see the astonishing evidence that has led scientists to conclude that fully developed, complex animals suddenly appeared on Earth during the Cambrian age and had no prior ancestors. And why this fossil evidence goes directly against Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Why an all-powerful intelligent designer is a better scientific explanation than Darwinism for the sudden appearance of fully formed animals in the fossil record. The four important programs in this series are available on DVD for a gift of $49. Then our second series is entitled The Case for Intelligent Design. Charles Darwin admitted he did not know how the first cell came into existence. But today, molecular biologists have discovered that the human cell is not simple, but complex beyond belief. In the nucleus of each cell is the DNA molecule, which contains a storehouse of three billion characters of precise information in digital code. This digital code is crucial to the origin and function of all plants, animals, and humans. But where did this complex DNA code come from? And is an all-powerful, intelligent designer a better scientific explanation than Darwinism for the genetic information found in the DNA molecule? The four television programs in this series are also available on DVD for a gift of $49. And then third, we are making available the documentary movie Darwin's Dilemma, which will transport you by state-of-the-art computer animation back in time to one of the great mysteries in the history of life, the geologically sudden appearance of dozens of major complex animal types in the fossil record without any trace of the gradual transition steps. You will learn of the vast intelligence God used in meticulously creating and designing the first animals. This documentary movie is available on DVD for a gift of $30. And finally, if you wish to order all three of these items together, that is both television series plus the documentary movie Darwin's Dilemma, they are available together in a special package for only $100. And to order now, you may call 1-800-805-3030. That's 1-800-805-3030. Or you may order these programs now at our website at jashow.org. Next week on The John Ankerberg Show. I tell the story of the doubt that Darwin had, and I show how the, that doubt has grown up to become a major crisis in evolutionary theory. to learn how to start a relationship with Jesus Christ, go to our website at jashow.org and click on Pray to Accept Jesus Christ as Your Savior.